So today what I'm going to do, um, I've done a little bit of research on modding or modifying some of the capacitors and a couple other uh, electronical components. I, I forget what the heck these are called. <laughs> it shows you how much I know. I know a little bit about soldering and I know a little bit about electronics, but I can't remember names. Anyways. This thing here comes apart like quite easily and a lot of these electrical components have to do with sound quality and um, like the analog aspect of it can change if you change the components in it. And I've done some research with like gear sluts and whatnot and there was uh, specific components. These here were, um, th it was suggested to replace the ones that were in here with OP275 uh, and then it kind of just left it blank like that. These ones are OP275G. I don't know what that signifies or what it means, but I bought them on eBay and then I have a whole whack of capacitors. I'm not replacing every single capacitor in here because there's there's a whole lot of them and I I don't actually really know which ones are the audio ones and which ones could if at all be just part of the power and I'm I just don't want to do the whole freaking thing um, because uh, I'm lazy one <laughs> number two is some of the areas are really difficult to get to um, because they're covered they're covered over with like felt and if I remove the felt then I can't really put it back together unless I do some kind of a like really good uh, super glue job of some sort but anywho I really wanted to kind of document the sound and the kind of replacement procedure because with my research that I've went through it's really really difficult to to get a sense of whether it really makes a difference um, when you do change components also I couldn't really get any information on, <clears throat> excuse me any information on how, how to actually uh, make the the modification like how to do it properly which pieces have to do with the audio and which pieces have to do with only the power and whether you should even change power uh, components um, so this is what I'm gonna document all I'm not gonna have like a huge long video I'm just gonna sort of show some pictures maybe video of what's changed also what I'm gonna do is I'm, I have this project it's completely unmixed. There's a few things that I've done. I think compression in the box, very little stuff. Uh, it might not even be compression. I think it's just it's just an expander on a lot of the drums and a few other s couple things going on. So anyways, pretty much a raw recording. I'm running that through the board before any modifications whatsoever. I tried to make it so that everything is... Let's switch the camera view. I tried to make it so that everything is as perfectly zeroed as possible. So I've kept almost everything mono except for some very obvious things. So like the overhead drum mics. And then the, the guitars I panned. Hard left, hard right. And it makes it just sound better. Almost like clearer. And I think if I do that, I would be able to more easily sort of distinguish whether one uh, before the modification or after the, the modification are either very similar or very different sounding. Um, the more open and clear, it seems to me that it would be easier to, to tell the difference between the two, uh, two states of the, uh, the board. Uh, furthermore, I think there's something to do with capacitors and whatever I'm changing, the components has something to do with the EQ response. I have no idea exactly how it's, it's it can or will be affected, but what I'm going to do is have a recording of the pure flat response um, of the project. I'm also going to do some sort of EQing on all the channels. Let's say like a, a high, high, high boost and maybe a low boost of some some sort something where there's a significant EQ change across the whole board maybe I won't do that much because if it's across the whole board it'll just be really super bassy um, but anyways 
having that distinct and thorough of a change um i can i can also um compare before and after the mod and i can try and get a sense for whether it actually made a difference to the eqing or not um, by comparing the two so that's what i'm gonna do i'll switch some of this stuff back and i think what i will do is i will just completely leave it unedited until i'm in the editing process and i'll just chop up the video and put some pictures if i feel that um the video isn't doing justice um i'll take pictures and vice versa so let's have a a little bit of a listen the other thing is i left some some of the uh 80 80 hertz uh high pass filters off uh just for the kick drum actually and all of them have it engaged um they all have the db pads on so the the db pads could be affected in some way i have no idea um i think that's pretty much all all right so everything is zeroed off as best as i can i took a picture of this one it'll show you guys what the state of the board was uh for like for your reference for watching the video also i can look back at the picture and try and set it as exactly as possible for when i'm done the modification because the modification requires me to take off all every single one of these little knobs and whatnot and then when i put it back together obviously it's not going to be the same so uh let's have a listen to what it sounds like without any adjustment to the eq and everything flat Alright, so that's what that puppy sounds like. Uh, now what I'll do is I'll change the EQ. Let's do something... Let's do like a smiley face. And actually, I'm going to get up and adjust this and then we'll come back. Alright, so what I've done is I've turned um, pretty much each frequency uh, cut and boost knob 
up by one little white line, one little notch. Uh, I think I did that for all the channels. I'll show you a picture right here. Uh, the the drums and the bass I kept all the same. Um, the frequency ranges all the way down to 80 on this adjuster and all the way up to 8 kilohertz on this adjuster. And because the guitars were drowning out and being too muddy, I changed the uh, frequency for these to 1.6 on the low end side. And it kind of just, it's better that way than rather than uh, the guitars at 80 because everything's too muddy. So that makes a quite a bit difference, uh, quite a bit of difference in the EQ sound. So here it is. Alright, so as you can hear, quite a bit of difference between these two. Like I said, I think it has enough EQ adjustment, especially in the low end, was what I'm mostly worried about, and the high end, where when you make more drastic adjustments in those areas, if there's something that's changed within the electronics uh, that has to do with the EQ part of the chain, then it should be uh, fairly obvious if there's any kind of difference in the auditory uh, aspect of it, like um, from after the mod, then this amount of adjustment, especially in the highs and especially in the lows, I should be able to distinguish between them. So anyways, um, that is that. That's part one. Uh, this here is cool. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of excited to see what the heck is going to go on to see whether I'm just kind of running on a fool's errand. I've, I've been told, or at least I've researched, and what I've come to the conclusion is that changing uh, the capacitors and changing, I wish I knew what these things were called. Maybe I'll look, up, look them up again. Um, but these things, when you change them, it's, it's supposed to be like as if you were to take a blanket off the speakers. So, I'm excited to see if the uh, if the legends are true, 
and to see whether it was worth all this time and all this money uh, doing this crazy mod and potentially <laughs> destroying this mixer if I if I uh, if I do everything correctly then hopefully you know everything will just run smoothly and it'll sound better and hopefully I don't kind of screw anything up along the way so anyways thanks for watching for part one actually hold on a second let's do a quick little check here So before we go, let's do a quick little comparison between the EQ and the non-EQ'd. So yeah, hopefully that'll uh, do the trick. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Part two is going to be, uh, depending on how much footage I, f I collect and what I think is kind of valuable, part two might just be all the sort of modification pictures sort of thrown into one little video c uh, collage of some sort. If not, then I'll just post the results for part two. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.